guys, what is going on? It is Grim, and I am here with something extremely different than what I normally would do. Um, as you can see, I'm playing Farming Simulator 17. I don't play a lot of simulators. I don't really like them. Um, and in fact, I, I don't enjoy this game. Uh, it's not my speed. However, um, I do have several friends that play the game, um, and they recently had rented a server. And it was just full of lag and rubber banding and, you know, it's in Germany and they're all on, like, the west coast of the United States. So it's just kind of really stupid. Um, so talking to them, I, you know, I offered up, I got, I got a server box, as you all know. Um, so I offered to, you know, hey, run a server for them for a few weeks or a month or whatever uh, for as long as they want to play. Um, so, you know, to do that, I was, you know, I was kind of thinking it would be like any other kind of install where you just kind of download the Steam you run the dedicated server that comes with it, and it's all good. Um, but at Giants and Farming Simulator, they uh, they disagree with that kind of sentiment. So the Steam version game basically cannot be used to run a dedicated server. So if you are buying a second copy uh, or your first copy to with the intention of running a dedicated server, do not, I repeat, do not buy that game from the Steam store. Okay, go on to their website, their, a, their official uh, website here, and go here, hit buy now, uh, buy the PayPal, Amazon, whatever, um, purchase to them, and then you'll get an email, it'll have a download uh, key, and the, uh, what the hell do you call it, the product code, okay. So they'll give you that, and that's what you need to run the server. Um, if you try doing it through Steam and you get partway there, you're going to notice that when you go to run the server, it asks for another code and that it tries to load it up through Steam, which is what creates the problem. Uh, so to, to run the dedicated server, it has to be independent. It can't have any uh, third-party overlay system on it. It creates a block, and it just cannot go through. So my good friend Charlie Zulu, who who wanted the server, he bought me the game on Steam with the intention that I could just run it. So that really wasn't the case. Um, now, like I said, I don't play this game. So was it a waste of a game? No. Uh, basically, I, you know, I said, hey, you were nice. You got me the game to do that with. Um, I'll go and buy the game, the standard version, through the you know website. That way I can run the server for you. And I'll just let my kid play this because he loves playing it. He plays... Um, Farming Simulator 16 on his phone, so now he can play 17 on his PC. My kid's six, and he's got his own PC. Uh, it's got an i7 2660K uh, Sandy Bridge. He's got uh, an AMD old ass uh, Radeon graphics card. And he's six years old. He plays like a champ. Keyboard, mouse, not even using a controller. Um, so he'll play. It. So it wasn't a loss. It's only 35 bucks, and like I said, I'm helping out a bunch of friends. Um, so for me, it was a no-brainer. Now, when you down, when you when you get the email and you download the game, you're going to uh, download the files. Uh, it's going to ask you for your code, and then you can download it. And then when you download it, um, you once you get it done downloading, it's going to be in uh, an image file, or in, uh, it's not an ISO, but it's an IMG file, which is basically the same thing. Um, so when you get that. Just make a folder anywhere. My, don't worry about how I have mine set up. It's really irrelevant. Um, so I just made an FS2017 folder. Um, then this is what you'll get here with patch 1.2.img. So go ahead and mount that. Uh, Windows 8 and 10 can mount right right in the drive. Um, so go ahead and mount it and then run the setup.exe. It's going to install the game, um, which is great. And then what you need to do is go back to the website here and... You will have to go up to the top and hit updates. And then you will see Farming Simulator 1.2.1. 1. Uh, so go ahead and download that. And then once you're done downloading that, go ahead and put that in the same exact folder where you mounted the .img. And then run that .exe and it will update the files that were installed. Um, and that's how you get the latest patch notes, uh, latest change logs and all that. Um, so whenever there's an update to the server, that's pretty much what you're going to have to do. Download the .exe, drop it in that spot, up, uh, run it, and then you're good to go. So now once you have all of this installed, uh, go into the Farming Simulator 2017, and you're going to see dedicated server .exe. 
and dedicated server .xml. So go ahead and open that .xml if you have Notepad++. You, great. If not, you can uh, edit it in uh, Notepad or I believe probably even Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer or you know find a program and figure it out. Um, so the first thing when you come in here to notice is that it is web server port 2344. Um, when you open it up as a first time install, it will be port 8080. Um, and what that is, is that is going to be the port number to the dedicated server's IP. Now, there's two ways of running a dedicated server. You can either run it to where you're just doing it locally, you're going to access it locally, or you're going to be the main guy controlling the server, okay? Um, regardless of whether you want it or not, your server will be public. That's why you password it. But what this is for is how to manage the server how to name it open it save it restart it okay it's based to run off a local system so web server port 8080 is fine um, if you're accessing it locally so like in my case I would do 198.1 uh, sorry 192.168.1 now my box is 159 which I know that, so I can do that, and here I am. So this is the beginning start of the web UI for the server. Now, if you wanted to access that publicly and have, you know, like a friend be able to log in and do that, um, I suggest changing that port to something that is random, whatever, and then going log into your router and port forward that port on the computer that you're running the server. So for my instance, I have a separate box that I'm running that's sitting right next to me in my house. Okay, it's connected on my local house network to the internet and all that shit. Okay, so I'm going to designate 2344 for that. So I'm going to log in to my router. I'm going to select my computer. Now, if you don't know your computer's IP address, it is really easy to find out. Um, and basically what you do is just open up a command prompt, uh, go right in, type IP config, hit enter, and then you're going to get a whole bunch of information spat out at you. So just scroll up and look for Ethernet adapter, Ethernet, and you'll see IPv4 address 192.168.1.3. Now, that's because I'm on my laptop, but say if I did that on the server box, which is this box right here, so let's go in here, command prompt. And then IP config, run that, you'll see here 192.168.1.159. And where did my web address here? 192.168.1.159. Okay, so that's how you handle it on a local private setting. Now, in my case, I want to have my friend be able to log in and make changes. So for me, what I'm going to do is give it a different port number, which I did, 2344. I'm going to port forward that port on, in my router. Now, I wasn't sure, honestly, what I needed it for, so I just did, uh, it's uh, ingoing and outgoing uh, TCP and UDP. I did them both. Um, I'm not an IT server guy, so have at it. If, if I'm wrong, please correct me and tell me why. That way I can uh, have that knowledge. Um, so I port forwarded that, and then basically all I need to do is instead of using a local IP right here, okay, I'm going to use my actual IP, which you can always get your IP just by going to Google and typing in my IP, and you'll see it pop up here, 47205432346. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to put that in right there, and I'm going to hit enter. Because I port forwarded it, I can now see the same login, okay? So now anybody who is outside of my network can log into this, granted they have the password. Like I said, you want to change it from 8080, you want to make it your own port, not tell anybody, you know, nobody to know except for whoever is accessing it. All this here that I'm doing is just for example, okay? So now that we have that going, you saw how there was a username and password to log in. Now, mine said log into Lazy Acres, that's just what we named our server. Um, so whatever you name yours, it'll say login to server name. Okay, so that's what admin is here. Okay, you can make that whatever you want. I just left it as admin. And then you'll want to set your password. Now, that's obviously not my password, 
but that's where you will put your password. So once you do that, you save this file, okay? And then once it's saved, go into your farming simulator uh, server files or you know files in general and run the dedicated server. Now when you do it, it should look something like this. It'll tell you where the config file is, you know, what server version, uh, what the port is URL for this. Now, like I said, I made mine public, so I'm accessing it via the public way. This is always going to show me the local way, which is 192.168.1.159. Yours will be different depending on your computer. Okay, so once this is up and running, I can now access this web UI. That means that this is officially running. Now, my server's up and running, there's four people playing on it, so I'm not trying to shut it down and reboot just to show a point. So, just work with me on that, okay? So, if we go here, I'm going to put in admin, and I'm going to type in uh, my password that I delegated, and then I'm going to log in. And now I'm logged in. Now... I would like to show you the initial screen. It's basically this, except for there's no information at the RAM, hard disk, or uptime, or player area. Okay, you won't have people here. And then these will all be fields that you can input information. Okay, so you can type in the name of your server. You can add an administrator password. You can add a game password, which is the password required to get on to the server. So that's where you'll want to put in a password if you want to keep it private. If you want it public and anybody to join, then leave that empty and no password will be required. But if you don't want people to join, put a password in there and they won't be able to join. Okay. Now, this is cool. You can have multiple save game slots. So you can have games that you play with your friends or by yourself or with different groups of people. And you can just stop the server, pick a different save, restart the server, and off you go. Um, and there are two different maps. There's Saznavka and Goldcrest Valley. Most people play Goldcrest Valley, but Saznavka is pretty cool. It's like a, a Cherno-Russian kind of uh, map. So it kind of has that little immersion to it. Um, and then the rest is pretty much uh, self-explanatory difficulty. Uh, port number, don't change. Uh, leave that default. Um, slots, you can put you know whatever you want to do for max. I just put 12 because that's what it was defaulted to. Um, and then the save interval is the one thing you probably want to update. Uh, default, it comes at 180 minutes, which is three hours. So I changed it to 10 minutes, um, so it could save every 10 minutes, which is just in case somebody forgets to actually save it, you know, whatever, everybody's info is still there. So, and then down here, this is where you'll have save, for save your current config, and then start server, and then once you start it, um, the first time starts always a little bit weird. So it'll start and this will pop up and be like it's running, but you'll have a couple errors under the notifications area. One will be asking about a license. Don't worry about that right now. Um, basically, once that's going, go back to the, the computer that's running the server. And when you go back to it, this is going to be popped up, but there's going to be a prompt in front of it. Okay. And it's going to ask you for the product code. Now you get the product code in your email. So just grab that product code, put put it in there, hit OK, it'll confirm. Once it runs, go ahead and go back to go back to the dashboard here and just scroll down, hit stop server, and then hit start server, and then it should just be nice clean where you can download mods and it'll tell you your pin code for your uh, Deddy mobile app. And the mobile app's just a basic app that you can download and it shows you who's playing on the server. You can chat with people on the server. Um, you can't do anything admin-like on the server, but you can just get a quick look at how the server is doing. You can see um, the configuration. You can see the uh, resource monitor. So it's, it's, it's pretty handy for a handy-dandy. Um, so, and then that's it. And then the server's running. And then basically the way that you confirm that is you just go into the game and you'll go into multiplayer, hit join game, uh, create your character, and then please wait, and then hit international, because any home servers or rented servers are going to be international, um, unless they're, I believe, official. Then they'll be either Germany or whatever that other one was. Um, so here you'll see, uh, this is their original server. This is the new one that I just put up. So you can see it here. Um, I'm going to join, start, and it saves my password. So I'll hit start. The game is being loaded. Please wait. And, then, and that's really it, guys. Um, you know, the reason why I'm making this video is because I didn't find any 
I didn't find any documentation about how to do this. Um, I saw a couple videos about 2015 or Farming Simulator 15, how to run it, um, which is where I got most of my information from. Uh, it took me some scouring to realize that Steam um, doesn't allow the server to be used. Um, that was literally a one-off comment on a random thread that I found. Uh, so that's how I tried it this way, and it worked. And I know not to use Steam. So, once again, don't use Steam if you're running, trying to run a daddy. If you're just trying to play the game, get it through Steam, whatever, that's fine. Uh, but if you are intending on running a dedicated server and you need to buy a second copy, do not buy it through Steam. Please buy it from the website. Um, just get a copy that doesn't use a third party. Okay? And then that's it, guys. Um, and then you can farm your little hearts out. Like I said, this isn't my style of game, so I probably won't be playing very much. Um, but these guys love it, and they're doing a pretty good job. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helps you. If you have any questions or, you know, any corrections or any other ideas or alternatives, please comment with them. Um, I'd love to talk a little bit more about it. Uh, I, I really love running servers and, you know, kind of being the, the nerd tech part of it. Um, whether it's a game I enjoy or not, because, I mean, these guys are playing on a server in Germany and rubber banding all over the fucking place and hating it, and now they're playing on Smooth as Butter, um, getting a great ping, I mean, solid 60 frames, so it's definitely worth it if, if you're looking to play the game a lot and you can spare the extra 35 bucks, um, so, but that's it for me, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed it, and again, like I said, if you have any, uh, comments or questions or you know updates on something i did or alternatives please leave a comment and i'd love to talk more about it all right guys thanks for watching take care